viewer requested video for a bit of a more in-depth look at what's happening with the lightning as I talk about it, the electricity inside a magnet and what it does when it goes down, hits figure eight, goes down and then out. How does it change inflection and inversion um, through the inertia line? So this is for Tom S. Thanks for the question Tom, because I missed loads out on the last video even though it was an hour long, but every now and again my brain hurts because I'm thinking. Now, several people, just as a side point, several people have said to me, um, my brain is watching your videos and so I can't watch them anymore. Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason is quite simple. And I, when all this was being ploughed into my head, on my testimony video, I say that my head felt like it was exploding, like it was pushing off, like it was filled with blood so that it created more connections in my brain so that I could see all this. That's exactly how it felt. The top of my head felt like it was just pressure. And it, it hurt to think. And not in a seriously painful way, but just like, oh, blimey, I'm getting tired thinking. Now, there's a reason. and <laughs> I decided to put in a funny reason. But the reason your brain's hurt is because of this. You've never used them before. All right. And there's the phone. Uh, that was the wife. So we're having sangria tonight. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> all right, Tom S. What is happening? Let's draw a nice big magnet here. What happens right here in a magnet? Okay. Hmm. Because energy has to turn itself literally inside out and the wrong way round. Now, if I had a model and materials like a piece, a thin strip of something with black on one side and white on the other, um, I'd probably be able to show you a little better. But basically, it comes up into the spiral, goes up, goes sideways go sideways, out, and out. Did we see that? Did you see it? Up, out, over, down, around, and out. And that, of course, would be your Saturn's rings. That's how they're formed. So there we go, Tom. That's basically what it does. And then, of course, if it was coming down, it would go Fibonacci spiral. I'm sorry, the, oh, the inertia line should be there. Fibonacci spiral, cross, cross, around, and out. Sorry, it would be so much more easier. And that one comes in. There, cross, cross, and out, is basically your arrangement. While I'm here, though, I also want to explain something else. Um, the thing about the Earth shape doing this, okay, this is from the other day, that um, is the Earth magnet shape. Now. You're probably like, oh, well, you know, some people might not think that that's anything. But I want to go back now. I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to go back to my original smoke drawing. Because this <laughs> is a radiation wave. And that's why I know it is correct. Because smoke... travels in an interlinking wave. This becomes this, which is an Ouroboros field, which then looks. I've drawn this. This is the tree of life. This is how energy travels. 
which is why the tree of life is this shape and in smoke these do that so this picture and this picture are exactly the same I've drawn this picture before but again that's what you get which is a smaller version of a halo wave which if looked at from the top looks can you see that? Yeah. looks that's your double helix and this it starts off like that it crosses itself starts like that but then more comes in here forces the Ouroboros which is double helix because it's now because it crossed itself and went through itself matter is now going in two directions so this is a space this is the end but because it's all forcing into this same spot here it does that okay so every time I draw that I'm drawing this see all of my pictures are three-dimensional and so this has a dome on top so you eventually it does that which is how our atmosphere is created on both sides of the planet so nothing's coming out of a vortex it's coming out of two different sides going that way and going that way going that way and going that way okay so that's what that is so I'm just gonna put up the picture of smoke travel um, which is what this is which is a radiation wave because I drew it the other day and I said sometimes uh, I said I've drawn it twice and it's big one little one big one little one that is this that's an Ouroboros Taurus field of a smoke ring that's a smoke ring that's how it traveled so to cut off there because there's only one pulse that one understand so yeah when I draw it like that that's a smoke ring but a pulsing radiation wave and this is happening at the same time it's not just me doing that that's called an interlinking wave and from the side it looks like that understand so it looks like this from the top just a smoke ring but it's actually doing this which is this which gives you that so I've put it on the screen and this is a radiation wave and it's exactly the same as Tesla's fluid diode which I put up years ago after studying smoke because God showed me that that's where I would find my first evidence of an interlinking rolling wave and cigarette smoke is radiation smoke because there's no flame so it's giving out a radiation wave which is an electromagnetic wave because in a cigarette here is the electricity energy is going this way and so you get a wake front and a splash down and so this these two bits and these two bits flow off and interlink into a wave so you get two different kinds of smoke this side is light strangely enough and this side is dark because it's actually because of the rotation the energy is sending it downwards then upwards I know that's difficult to explain but that's the way it goes so uh, I do believe that my radiation wave which is Tesla's fluid diode which means I understand Tesla's work perfectly without even having to look at it because I haven't bothered looking at Walter Russell and all these other names that people have thrown at me and said I'm copying and doing all sorts of stuff and I'll never be as clever as Tesla yeah that's funny no uh, I'm becoming as clever as Jesus which means Tesla means nothing to me because I figured that out and then I found the Tesla fluid diode which is in water because all energy travels the same 
So I know that took a, a bit of a jump there, Tom. <laughs> but as we saw, that is what is happening on a magnet. And because there's two inertial planes, which is what I didn't explain a minute ago, it's how that one is able to go one way, then another. Okay, I've actually just uh, stopped the video to show you this picture in the middle. Um, I did this uh, July 17th, 2016. Because all of this stuff's in my head, and I wasn't sure what it pertains to half of it, so I've, I drew it. So um, the two differences in directional flow that we're looking at is that picture in the middle, and I've even written next to it four winds. Um, so that's another little explanation from way over, you know, around about a year ago, uh, that I already kind of knew this, but there's so much information, it's kind of difficult. All right, thanks. Because this is going upwards and out and changing configuration, when it goes sideways, because we have two inertial planes, vortex area, vortex area, but there's also vortex area, vortex area, because there is no up or down in space or the planet or magnets. There is only into the centre or out of the centre. Okay, so a vortex this way, a vortex that way, and a vortex that way, and a vortex that way, which happens on either side of these four planes happens because that's where the pull is. It doesn't matter if something's coming in here, it's going in as a vortex. Here, it's going in as a vortex. Here, vortex, here, vortex. All of that does that just outside the field that is coming in, in, and out, and out. So all of that is vortices. So in between this space and this one, this one's thinner though, there is the figure eight. So I'll just draw it for you one more time, Tom, because obviously I just drew all the way over that. But that's what I mean. All you have to do is draw a spiral because energy travels in a spiral. So we have vortex over, over. These are another two vortices like I just did. Uh, oh, and out. A little difficult, but you see what I mean, Tom. So we're coming in because I might have gone the wrong way. See, I can go that way, okay, that way, and then we're back out, okay. So that is what just happened, and then it does the same this way, and then on the opposite side of the cube, it will do the same from this direction and this direction to go down and out the bottom. And this one will do the opposite of what this one's doing to come out the top. So it is this switches through. This tiny little point here points in all directions. There's just vortices there, which means energy is allowed to hit, go through the inertia line, same as if it was coming from this direction in sort of the supposed vortices, but on one side. So it comes in. Spins around, goes down a vortex, comes out, gets forced back into a vortex, out and around. And back as EM. So all this is EM. All this in here is electricity. Okay? But as soon as it leaves the magnet, it becomes EM. But inside all of this is electricity. There is also electromagnetism, which is round and round and round like that. Because... Electricity through matter creates electromagnetism. But electromagnetism through matter, which is where the electricity is, creates electricity. I hope I've made that plain. I thought I did. So we came in a spiral over, under, no, I think I did that wrong. Yeah, that one. Okay, so we all stay on the same side around there. Fibonacci, and then it goes into the inertial plane going that way, which again is a in. And it leaps out, but then again, it gets pulled back in and then back out as our Fibonacci spiral. And then again, so we've got one there, so we would have two, three, four, and then four on this side. Okay, I hope that explained it. Thanks very much. My name is Lee. I follow the Christ. And this was for Tom S. Thanks a lot. Bye.